the, the adhesive, um, this is a, a urea formaldehyde resin. So it's a liquid resin with a powder hardener and a, and a powder extender uh, powder, which just basically blocks the glue from coming through to the surface of the veneer. So I'm using a little hopper fed glue spreader here. I'll put some of that in there. We can top this up as we, as we go, as we need to. So why have you chosen that glue over an ordinary wood glue like tight bond or PVA? Well, the advantage of a UF resin is that it has a very long open time. So you've got plenty of time to, to, to get the glue onto the veneer, get the, the veneer lay up onto the mould and get it under pressure before the glue starts to go off. The other key advantage is it's a chemical cure. Okay, so it's not relying on moisture in the glue line being absorbed into the, into the, the veneers the same way as a PVA would. PVA will, will work. But what it means is when you take the, the, the layup or the sides off of the mould, you've still got a lot of that moisture trapped within that veneer. Course, yeah. Whereas with a chemical cure um, adhesive, once you take it out and the, the glue's gone hard, that's it. You know, there's no, there's no additional evaporation to take place. Um, now, it, one of the important things when gluing up this type of layup, we've got alternating directions of grain. So this is a rather wild and wacky face veneer that's going to be on the outside of the guitar then we've got cross grain layers of tulip wood poplar basically poplar and a central long grain layer again of tulip wood now we only ever glue on to the long grain layers because if you use this resin with a roller on the cross grain layers it tends to just pick it up and, and smash it to pieces so we don't do that so we're only going to glue on to the long grain layers and you don't need a huge amount of this um, adhesive you don't you don't want it to be squeezing out the sides and going everywhere so you can be you can be fairly mean with it and also because it's not going to be drying or, or, or part curing um, through absorption um, of the moisture into the, the veneer you know you've got plenty of time and it, it's more important to get it even than it is to get it um, to get it on quickly now, the way this little glue spreader works is if I pull that trigger and roll it I'm actually putting more glue down if I pick it up and let the trigger go I'm then just dis distributing the glue that's already there so you can you know, any areas that have gone on a bit thick you can go over them and and you know move the glue into the area that hasn't got any any on yet Now the veneer that we're using on the face here, you may, you may already have guessed, this isn't a natural veneer. This is what's called an engineered veneer. So it is still made of wood, but the way it's manufactured is that layers of different colored veneers are glued together, normally over some kind of bumpy mold. Um, and then that's sliced up again. And that's how you get all these funny spots and how they um, create the grain pattern in it. But it means you can, you can end up with a very, very exotic or fancy looking veneer that is actually completely eco-friendly because these are normally made from plantation grown poplar or some other um, easily croppable wood. So you've got no worries about rainforests having been chopped down in um, South America. What I'm looking for here is just a nice even coating and I'm kind of using the reflection of the light to judge how much glue is on in any one, one space. Obviously you want to make sure you don't end up with any, any dry spots. Okay, that looks about right. What we'll do is we'll just take, take that and put that down on there and then flip the whole thing over again. So again, we're applying the glue to the long grain layer. A little bit more down in that corner. So 
So all of the internal layers are tulip wood. And then what I tend to do is use a different veneer to the outer for the inside of the guitar. <coughs> so in this instance, I'm actually using a, a figured sycamore. Which I always think looks quite nice on the inside of a guitar. So the question Lewis asked earlier was, um, well, I, I have on on most of the, say most, <laughs> probably half the guitars I, I've I've made, or guitar sides that I've made, I've used tulip wood on, and that was primarily because the Macaferry guitars, which is which were the guitars that first interested me in guitar making, were were constructed using using a poplar core. Um, whether or not they use three layers with grain going in different directions, it's very difficult to ascertain. I've never had that confirmed, but it was certainly a, um, a, a, a popular wood core. There would be nothing to stop you using the same, same species of veneer all the way through. So if you particularly wanted um, a, a guitar yeah. with um, you know, solid ebony sides, for instance, you could just use ebony veneer all the way through rather than using different different species so almost like a solid ebony side exactly so you'd end up with something that was for all intents and purposes solid ebony got one of the molds um, so important to make sure we put it the right way up so um, the fancy veneer on the outside and then what we've got here is what we refer to as a call this is just another thin sheet of plywood um, with this non-stick um, glass cloth material on it and we put that on top of the veneer on top of the layer and you just start these are like double-sided velcro straps they're really useful for holding the uh, material more or less in the shape that you're gonna be pressing before you put it in the vacuum bag also means you just make sure everything's positioned correctly um, if you're using um, very fancy book matched veneers you need to make sure you're getting the um, the, the registration point on the mold matching up with the veneer um, it's the easier to do that before it goes in the bag than after okay so that's the side ready to go in the bag and what we'll do I'll do um, I'll do the back now as well and again, the same, the same idea. Um, fancy veneer on the outside. Always applying the glue in the direction of the grain. Is there a reason to apply the glue in the direction of the grain? Because if you go the other way, you can see how you know it's really quite sticky. If you do it that way, the veneer tends to wrap around the roller. Yeah, of course. Um, and that causes swearing, in my experience. <laughs> you can crack it here, can you? Yes, absolutely. Especially on the on the cross grain layers for the sides, um, they they just end up in you know splinters wrapped around your glue spreader. Now this this adhesive will take probably about six hours to cure with the the hardener powder that we're using. You do get different speeds of hardener, so if if you wanted to. Um, be pressing in less time than that then you can use a faster hardener it's also heat activated so if you if you want to make molds with heater pads on them like you quite often see um, you can get the cure time down to 10 minutes so you know the um, so it's temperature related. exactly yeah it's really important when you wash out your glue spread you don't use hot water <laughs> because it, it it will just instantly cure the the adhesive in the little bit be needing a new glue spreader. Right, okay, so that's that's looking pretty good. So again, we then have a cross grain layer, and all these cross grain layers I've actually made up by gluing the strips of veneer together, because veneer doesn't come. Well, most veneers don't come 500 mil wide, but um, I'll go through the process for doing that um, in the morning. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. 
if you can if you can glue a soundboard together you can edge glue veneer the process is, uh, is actually very very similar These are these are quite oversized for most guitars, um, but it's always better to have a, a layout that's slightly too big than slightly too small. <laughs> One of life's general good rules. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You'll often find with panels or even the layout like this that the, the quality of the bond right at the very edge isn't as good as it is sort of 20 mil in from the edge. So I always make sure that we have plenty of spare. And if as you're doing it you find any little blobs of sawdust or anything, just, just pick them off because you, you don't want to make, uh, you don't want to have any little bits of grit or anything separating the veneers once they're in the press otherwise it stops the, the layers of veneer squeezing together nicely there's a little one there look. the midges yeah I'll store them under here the same as you do Mark yeah. you never know when you're going to need them do you? no exactly okay Looks like a lot of fun. That's what I say? Looks like a lot of fun. This fun? It's good. You can find out how much fun tomorrow. <laughs> okay, and then the last layer, again, figured sycamore. Now the, one of the leaves here was obviously the top leaf in the bundle. It had a bit of sunlight on it. It's gone a bit dark, so I'll make sure I glue, glue that one up and then we can trap it inside the guitar. No one will ever know. I like the idea of using the same one on the inside. Do what's that? I like the idea of using the same veneer on the inside. You do? And then nobody would even know, would they? No, no, absolutely. Like I say, let's... I could look at a guitar like that and I would never even know. No. Um, no way of telling. So I mean, that's kind of like a halfway house between doing it this way or doing it with the same veneer all the way through. Um, you've clearly, got, you've got those options, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. You got solid no. I mean, clearly, by making a, a, a plywood construction, you're building in temperature, uh, temperature and humidity stability, stability. Um, stiffness, and strength. Absolutely. The yeses. Yeah. That's all the important things which leads to sustain. Yeah. Which is what guitar players all want. Yeah, so as you were saying earlier, Bowman's got a bad name. Yeah, I mean I think during the, the 60s and 70s, um, plywood construction on acoustic guitars was used just as a way of producing very cheap instruments on an industrial scale. Um, I think it, it's been forgotten that lots of guitars, going back to the 19th century, you know, some extremely good classical guitars um, by very famous makers were, were manufactured using laminated um, sides and backs. So this isn't a new, this isn't a new thing. Um, Macaferri did it famously, didn't it? Yeah, Macaferri did it. Um, and it was a, a, a mate of mine at school who had a, I'm guessing it was probably one of the Ibanez copies in the 70s and he, he used to obsessively practice scales and you know he was an extremely good guitarist but he was the first person who told me about Django Reinhardt and 
um, you know, the story of the, the, the guitars and the, have you, you know, seen the book? The, I have got the book, yeah. Book, yeah. And the, uh, the second sound box and all this kind of thing that just, just fascinated me. Yeah. Um, I've gleaned that book for as much information as I can. <laughs> I borrowed it for a while, I had to give it back. Right. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't. Um, I haven't gone as far as building a secondary sound box yet, but never say never. I'm not sure that it it's really it really stacks up in this day and age with sort of modern amplification and all the other clever stuff you can yeah, do. It was uh, in the days before amplification. Yeah, it was. Um, they always ripped it out, didn't they? Sorry? A lot of them got ripped out. Yeah, most of them did because they used to rattle terribly. You know, they they detach from the from the main body of the guitar. Okay, so this is this is actually a a, a